What's up everybody? How you doing? Ryan Napton here with Casey Willix. How we doing? My absolute pleasure to be out here with you. If you are not subscribed to Casey, hit that link in the description right now. Do yourself a favor. Amazing snowboarding, whole bunch of inspirational stuff on your channel. And lately you've been kicking out a bunch of tip things too. Yeah, I gotta help the people out. Today's a little different one. We got the Ryan Napton style board. I'm doing my first ever attempts at getting low with my size 12 boot. Not a Donick board, but yeah, he's on something wider and uh, yeah, I don't know, we'll check it out. But uh, um, but yeah, in the spirit of, uh, since you've been doing tips and stuff, how about, there's no park open today. That's where Casey's the mad beast for sure. <laughs> but uh, just cruising around Breckenridge Groomers, how about in the spirit of your recent tips thing, we just do a bunch of random clips and tips. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Every actually ever new board for you but still very nice run there thank you you liking it at all it's difficult a lot harder than you would think gotcha but way more fun than you would think too. anytime you get a new board it's gonna feel a bit different but that's quite a bit different of a board for you <laughs> yeah for sure but uh right there it's a couple of very nice switch turns so i guess my first tip will be this morning i was out here all by myself because I got no friends. I kid, I kid about that, but uh, I love <laughs> snowboarding by myself. And I was just riding, I was basically taking three quarters of the run switch dance, and I was starting to rip turns with it. And I got the chills and let out some involuntary woos when, <laughs> when I added in like little cab threes and stuff. And uh, so let's kick out a switch tip. Uh, switch dance riding, my first tip, I want one out of you too. My first tip will be anytime you're bored on your board, there's a cat track down here. Just switch that darn board around and stand on your board switch, riding it switch. Cause if you're just standing there, it takes just time on your board switch to get good. So let's demonstrate. That gets the adrenaline flowing. And yeah, it's just not gonna happen by itself. You actually have to work on it. And yeah, any boring times, you just switch your board around, then you'll put miles on your board switch stance. I've said that before, and it's gonna actually get you riding switch how you wanna be. How about you, got any tips for it? Switch riding? Switch riding. Keep the switch going. I mean, in the park as well, if you do land a feature, sometimes you do a regular board side, you land goofy or you land switch and then you're coming into the next feature and you get scared and you do that little swivel and you know it doesn't feel right and then you hit the next feature and you're kind of off because you turned. Find a basic trick, maybe just a switch 50-50 or even a switch ollie, switch board side and commit, have the confidence to go towards that next feature and actually hit it switch. I love that. If I'm not, blah, blah. random gear tip, goggles get scratched up pretty easy. As soon as you're done shredding, put them back in their case, even if it's a soft case or a hard case, better yet. You've had those for a while, they look good. Yeah, you take care of them yeah. every night. It sucks when you see people with like super expensive goggles and they're hard. all scratched <laughs> up. Yeah, that was rough. One of the things you actually mentioned earlier, what do you do mountain hood snowboarding when it's just slushy and wet? So it, this could apply for springtime snowboarding too. For the boots, you mean? For, for the boots. For the boots, I have two inner linings and I dry one out from the day before while I'm riding that day. So that way I always have a set of inner linings that are dried on my boots. I like it because putting on wet boots sucks. Yeah, and it's good for breaking them in too. Yep. Mount Hood is the place. So if you have a, uh, a pair of boots that you're getting rid of but still like the liner, pull that out and save it.
after making a handful of turns, I can always get like an extra click or two out of my bindings. I love that, for carving especially, I love that connected feeling of the boards. So, boom, get those extra clicks. All right, a couple tips for 180s is it's a really small maneuver. You don't actually turn that much. So if you can get your upper body, AKA your shoulders already to how you want them to be when you're landing, as soon as you pop, all you need to do is shift your lower body and your upper body's already done with the trick. Casey just said another. No, Casey just said another nice tip about 180s. What did he say? You don't even need to actually jump off the ground when you're first working on them. If you have your angles of your feet and your edging proper, you can get your front shoulders opened up and just swivel on the ground before you actually work on the pop and doing the 180. Let's see some. Love your tips on just being able to swish your board around because if and re-engage the edge because if you can't do that most likely you're not going to be doing it cleanly jumping it and ollie in it yeah and if you can't do it on just regular groomers i mean you probably have no business taking it even to like a 10 foot jump and learning backside 180s the edge control is all done on regular ski hills those are facts facts even yeah. those threes then you just bust out a three and same thing yeah yeah how about I, you do a couple threes for us i gotta say a tip real quick that i noticed you always stop like right behind slow signs uh, i love stopping in the rest areas it's so weird that they have designated rest areas but i love it and right behind slow signs for safety where you'll never get hit and we're not looking uphill right now people ask me that all the time and i just took that note from you today love it good stuff <laughs> Stop it. People are stuck. Major tip with 360s is when you get your head and your shoulders around and you pop up, you wanna make sure that your tail and your nose and your edges are off of the ground so that you don't clip before you shift that 360. A lot of people, as soon as they jump, they get their upper body around and then they throw their lower body before it's truly off the ground. And then that's when you catch your edge and we don't even wanna explain what happens at that point. Absolutely, especially when you're taking, obviously we're, you were just doing them on little side hits and stuff, but those big jumps, I've done that myself off the I used to spin front sides off the toes yep and man you get more pop you can catch more air but if you start the spin too early woo, just wait wait <laughs> just that wait. one little extra millisecond for some reason I just was moving my uh baklava or balaclava whatever it's called around I, don't, I used to snowboard without one of these I don't know how I did it that's the best thing in snowboarding it really is I'm gonna put a link in the description to the one I use the friendly suite Ooh, it's so nice and light
I'm gonna kick out one last random tip and then I got a question for Casey. Uh, it's the beginning of the year, so a lot of your bindings might actually have loose screws and stuff. Uh, losing binding straps on the mountain, having stuff randomly fall off. It almost happened to me at Keystone. I was like, oh my gosh, my heel strap was about to fall off my board. And that can just ruin a day because you might not be able to find it and you can't snowboard without a heel strap. So just give your bindings a gear check. I would be willing to bet either between your uh, base screws and your straps, you, about 25 to 33 percent of you might have a loose, <laughs> loose screw. 33. It's happened to everyone, right? 100 percent. I did not do any of that this year. Gotcha. But I it's happened. Probably, in, it ha probably. happened to you in the past, I'd assume. Absolutely, every year. <laughs> Day ruiner. Um, I want to know. So when I was growing up snowboarding, my massive inspirations. You're a massive inspiration to a ton of people watching the vids on YouTube, and uh, not just snowboarding, health-wise, life-wise, um, but snowboarding-wise, some of my inspirations were Terrier, Power, Style, yep. uh, Peter Line, Chad Otterstrom, Ingmar, Daniel Frank. These I could not watch enough of those guys in vids. I want to know who your the snowboarders that were your inspirations were. I mean, I started pretty late to the game. I didn't really start like full-time park riding and snowboarding year-round until like 2009, 2010. And we all know that was Torstein Horgmo's year. Yeah. Swag, God, hands down, head to toe. And pretty much anybody that he was riding with around those times when the Shredbot video started coming out and social media content started to become a big thing. So yeah, yeah. Torstein was my number one for sure. He's still one of my favorites. He's got yeah. such good style, no snowboarding like no tomorrow. Yep. So you know what, let me expand on this. Here's a, here's a comment that I read in certain things for contest especially. You know, we're not in the contest realm really. You've done some here and there. Way back in the day I used to do a ton, but uh, yep. um, like whenever I see, whenever I hear all comp, comp riders now are spin to win guys and have no style. I mean, look back at some of those earlier snowboard vids, especially, you know, prior to 2000s. Some of those guys who are known for their style, look at their backside 180s, their flailing arms and stuff. Those top guys nowadays, they are all so damn good. Of course, they have to do a 16, 20 triple or more to w yep. be winning those contests. But if they do a 180, oh my God, some of them are doing things, adding little f flavors and variations that make me drool. You know, yep. it's inspiring to see what those guys are doing these Even days. Even the double corks these days, they're starting to grab stale fish or grabbing holy crail and it's, and it's getting real Tweak it in weird ways, yep. absolutely. One, who's your, of my favorite riders to watch these days, uh, Marcus Cleveland. Last year he had a terrible start, unfortunately. I was watching him at Keystone and yeah. he, he just stood on his board different than other people. He is so freaking good. He unfortunately got hurt at the due tour, but I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's back now. But my God, dude, watching that guy, yep. it's just like, wow, he makes that level of snowboarding look so damn fun. Who's, yep. your, who's some of your faves uh, these days? Kostenberg, yeah, Sage. Yeah, absolutely. Makes everything look good. You watch him in contests. He's doing Euro carves. He's having a blast. He's yeah. not overthinking it. He's just having fun. And that's Even when he won about. the Olympics, at the end, he was doing like Literally. a little Euro carve thing, yep. just having fun with it. Love just it. Just watched love that it. actual run the other day. Yo. So once again, do yourself a favor. Go check, check out Casey's channel, one of the hardest working YouTubers there is. He's put in, I mean, you did what, like 600 in a row vids? It <laughs> takes work to do that. I can't even imagine the grind with the traveling you did and stuff. I know the feeling of being up until 2 a.m. and then editing videos, then waking up at 6 a.m. to go snowboarding again. It becomes a grind. So to do that many in a row, we're questionable Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I can't real. even imagine all the struggle. So yeah, go check, do yourself a favor. Check out his link in the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Absolute brother. Absolute pleasure riding with you. And thank you all for watching. Happy shredding and kapla! Ha <laughs> ha!